Hey guys, so today for my video, I'm going to do a cleanup declutter of my makeup collection because I'm kind of bored in my holidays and I feel like I have the sudden urge to organize and cleanse my soul. And the cleansing and purging started my makeup collection, which is growing a little bit exponentially, a little bit more than I would have liked. So I'm going to clean everything up and organize this mess of a collection. Yes, I am very excited and let's get to my makeup collection. Okay, so this is my makeup collection. I did pull everything out, but wow, there is just way too much. We're going to go through everything, have a quick declutter and organize it. Let's go. Okay, what we're going to do first is start off with this tray of miscellaneous makeup that I actually can't fit in my drawers. And this will be my decluttering box. So everything I don't need, I'll put into this empty box. I'm going to declutter this because it's not in my shade. Um, it's a little bit too dark for me. I'm setting powder and too light for a bronzer. So give it to mom or friend. This is an amazing powder. So keeping this, so keep pile. My favorite powder of all time, definitely keeping. Really nice bronzer. I'm going to declutter this single eyeshadow because it's dried out and it's quite difficult to use, so not much point keeping it. We'll be decluttering these two um, single eyeshadows because they've dried out. Unfortunately, they are so stunning, but they dried out and can no longer use it, so no point keeping them. This is such a pretty single shock shadow, but it has hit a hard pan and I have tried scraping it many times as you can see, but it's just too difficult to use and I have other super shocks from um, Colourpop. So this is in the shade Ritz. Um, this is a collab with Laura Lee Los Angeles and Colourpop a while back. These three can still be used, so I will be keeping them. And keeping. I'm going to put back all the makeup I just put out from this tray because I'm keeping all of these. And then I'll organize them later. Okay, tray number one. We'll be decluttering both of these highlighters. They're barely used, but um, they are a really nice formula. But because I don't use highlighter that much anymore, um, it's not much point. And I really don't support this brand anymore, so... We'll be decluttering both of these. Also, we'll be decluttering this um, single eyeshadow from Makeup Max. It is a cream and a powder on one side. It is really pretty, but I just don't find myself reaching for this. There's not much point, so we'll be giving it away. Also, we'll be decluttering this powder from Becca. It's a really nice finishing powder, but um, again, it's too dark for me. And also, I can use this as a contour but I do have better contouring powder so there's not much point I'll be giving this away these two are actually really pretty so I'll be keeping them so that's it for this drawer for my single shadows okay, this is my mascara brow pencil and eyeliner we'll be keeping these um, I don't have that many in here but only one I will be decluttering is this Revlon uh, micro pencil because I originally wanted a shade that was really close to my skin tone um, so I can enlarge my eyes when drawing some looks but um, it's too hard and the pigment is just not there it's not that creamy it's hard to blend I could be finding better pencils so not a fan of this Everything else I do love, so I'm going to keep everything else. Okay, another drawer of miscellaneous things. So, my blushes. These are absolute winners. We'll be keeping both of them. Um, really pretty. My two Maybelline highlighters. Um, I do like these formula quite a lot, so I will be keeping these. These two lip tints are absolute winners. I absolutely love them. Um, so I'm keeping this one, and this is my favorite lip product of all time, so definitely going to keep this one as well. Concealer primers. We'll be decluttering the 
fancy uh, matchsticks in the shade Ivory because it's a little bit dry on my face and I use this as a brightening um, concealer under my eyes or over the face and it just, because it's such a dry formula, it actually makes my under eyes look very, very cakey so um, I do not prefer to use this. I do like to use the Maybelline Age Rewind instead now so we'll be decluttering this. It is really nice, I think, especially if you have oily to combination skin but I'm a bit on the dry side so we'll be decluttering this. Everything else I'm going to keep. This concealer is the best concealer ever. Highly recommend it. It's like $3. It's so good. Lippies! Okay. We'll be decluttering the Bite Beauty um, lipstick because this shade is just not something I reach for. And if I do want to go for bolder lips, I have other colors and formulas I prefer over this. It also has a weird minty taste on the lips, so I'm not a big fan of that. This is in the shade Gaza Pacho. Not sure how you pronounce it, but um, not a big fan of this lipstick, mainly for the color. The formula is okay, um, but yes, we'll be letting this one go. We'll be letting go the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. The formula, for some reason, is just sticky and goopy on me. It also um, just doesn't feel very nice on the lips. Makes my lips look very cracked and just not that pretty in general, so not a big fan of this. Everything else I do enjoy, so I'm going to keep that. Okay, mascaras. We'll be decluttering the Scandalized Wow Wings by Rimmel. This is a very average mascara for me. The applicator isn't my favorite. Um, it just makes my lashes look a little bit clumpy and doesn't do as much as I would like it to, so we'll be letting this one go. Also letting go of the Lash Princess by Essence. This is something I'm really sad about because I wanted to love this mascara so bad. This mascara has been raved about by everyone. I even did a video with it because um, I bought it because of Rach Loves. I love her channel and her recommendations, but this mascara just doesn't do it for me. It makes my lashes look really nice and long and everything, but it just doesn't wear for me. It smudges, it smears, and it transfers all over the lash line. It looks like I broke up with my boyfriend um, when I don't even have a boyfriend, so, you know, I just don't love how this stays on my lids. But the Volume Stylist by Essence, this stays on my um, lashes all day and it's absolutely amazing. So I don't know why. I will be buying the waterproof version just to test it because I really love how this makes my lashes look. It just doesn't wear long enough for me. So we'll be decluttering this as well. This might come up as a shock to everyone, but the L'Oreal Lash Paradise isn't that good on my lashes. I, I feel like that's such a controversial opinion, but... The applicator is just way too big for me. It makes my lashes look very clumpy. It doesn't really extend or lengthen all that magic. It doesn't happen for me. It just, I don't know what happened. It doesn't work for me. And the wear test is okay, but the clump, I really do not enjoy it. So we'll be letting go this mascara as well. Everything else I adore, so we'll be keeping. Wow, we're really racing through this. Now, glosses, I go through my glosses really quickly, but I do love all of these. I will be, however, letting go of the NYX Professional Makeup uh, Lip Lingerie Gloss because I simply do not reach for it. This color and shade is so stunning. It's such a pretty peach. I love the applicator, but the formula of this is a little bit goopy and um, sticky for me. I'm not sure why. Everyone raves about NYX's lip lingeries, but... This one isn't working for me. Maybe the lip lingerie for like liquid lipsticks will be better, but this just doesn't do it for me on my lips. So we'll be letting go of this one as well. Um, don't use it enough. Funnily enough, the witchery lip gloss is actually such a pretty one. I really like it. You know, for a clothing company, this is a really nice gloss. It's a really pretty color. It feels really glossy and hydrating. It also looks amazing on lips. So I actually really enjoy this. I use this quite a lot. Um, but yeah, all of these, absolute winners, and we'll be keeping them. Okay, blushes. Okay, so these are some of my blushes and highlights. 
I do enjoy most of these, but I will be letting go of the Natio blusher. This has just been in my collection for too long. I have hit pan on it, as you can see. It is well loved, but it is old and probably expired. And the color is a little bit on the cool side for me, so it doesn't look the most flattering on my cheeks. And there's a lot of glitter and um, shimmer, as you can see. So not my favorite. Um, I have better blushes. I don't reach for this often unless it's my project pan. So letting go of this one. The rest I will keep though. More lippies. So these are lip liners, lip glosses, etc. So I actually like all of these lip products. So I will be keeping all of these. Um, special mention to Bobbi Brown. This is a lip topper. It's very glittery as you can see. It is mesmerizing. I love this as a lip topper. It is just like a disco ball on your lips. Really, really pretty. Highly recommend. It is very underhyped. Um, a similar product is the Ciate um, Glitter Lips. Also like a disco ball on your lips. It's so beautiful. I actually mentioned this in my um, top 10 lip products that you must have. Very underrated. Really love it. Um, two samples from Lancome. Uh, really pretty reds. So we'll be using these a lot. They're very, very, very stunning. Look at that. So pretty, right? So we'll be keeping these. Um, Frank Body makes some really nice lip products, actually. They make some really good products in general. Their highlighter is also really nice, so we'll be keeping this. And the Soap and Glory um, Gloss Stick is actually really pretty as well. It's a really nice nude. It's a very beige peach nude, so I like to use this a lot as well. Very underrated, so we'll be keeping everything in this tray. This tray, some cheek products. This is a contour cord from iMimi. It's a KBU brand. Insanely pigmented. Really, really pretty, actually. Um, underrated. I love this for my contour, so loving this. Um, Rimmel Natural Bronzer. Again, really pretty. Um, have quite a dip in this, actually. And I enjoy this quite a lot. Um, this Colourpop's Pressed Powder blush uh, in Desert Rose is my favourite blush from Colourpop, so we'll definitely be keeping this one. However, these two um, Too Faced lip duos, I just don't love. This is the bronzer and highlighter. It is the perfect bronze and highlighter like duo for me. However, I can't stand the sense of this. It's like this really artificial fruit. It's not even a pineapple. I have no idea what it is. I hate the scent of it. Just opening the package, I can whiff it behind the phone camera and I can't stand it. Like whenever I apply this, I get such a headache. So it's really sad. Um, the formula's on the hard side. I don't mind it. It's very nice, easy to build up the pigments, perfect amount of warmth for my um, cheeks, but I hate the scent of it. So we'll be letting this one go. Same thing with the Too Faced Strawberry Blush Duo. Again, really, really pretty. Love what it does for my cheeks, but I hate the scent of it. It's also a little bit on the glittery side for me. Um, as you can see, very, very glittery, even on this side. I have made quite a bit of progress on it. I put it in my project pan, but it's not something I really reach for unless I'm forced to. So I think there's not much point keeping it in my collection if I'm not getting enjoyment out of using it. So we'll be letting this one go too. Everything else will be kept. And that is it for this side of my tiny drawers. Uh, I think we made a really good progress. So now let's move on to palettes. Oof. Okay. Before we do that, I do have two face palettes that I am keeping. This is the Morphe um, Highlighter and Contour Palette. It has really nice bronzers here, so I love using these shades. I mix them all the time. The highlighters are nice. I don't reach for them a lot because it's on the drier side, but honestly, these four are perfect bronzers, so keeping it for that. I will probably use these, but just not as much. So keeping this one. The Tarte Life of the Party palette. Again, really beautiful. I love the formula of these blushes. So creamy, buttery, easy to blend. The highlight is a little bit dark for me and a little bit on the powdery side, so I like to swish everything together. And the bronzer, perfect bronze color for me, so really really lovely and I love the little clutch as well so keeping these two 
Now my palettes. I have a lot of palettes, um, so let's hopefully get through this today. Okay, so we'll start. These two are like my favorite palettes ever, so never going to declutter it. Cleo makes beautiful palettes. Um, brown shoe is really nice for every day. Street brick is just um, a bit bolder, and I like mixing them together. The shimmer shades are phenomenal, and um, I can't rave about these enough, so never going to declutter these. So I'm keeping both of these. However, I will be letting go the Magnify's Jewel Rocks Edition by um, Rimmel. Now, this eyeshadow palette, I think it's the first eyeshadow palette I've ever bought. It's so pretty, but I, I think I bought this as like a dupe for the Anastasia Subculture palette because the color scheme kind of reminded me of that. These shadows are a bit on the hard side, but they perform phenomenally. I think they are actually better than some of my higher end shadows I've used before. So I actually really like it. Love the shimmers. They are phenomenal. The mattes um, are pigmented. They blend easily. But here's the thing. I don't use this palette a lot. A lot of these shades are actually duped in my So Jaded palette by Colourpop and Kathleen Lights. And I just prefer the formula of that one a bit more. I don't reach for this specifically. And it's, I just think it's a little bit of a waste to put in my collection if I'm not going to use it because this is phenomenal, it's actually really pretty and I just want it to get more love so I'm going to declutter this. This is the Revolution Makeup um, Palette. This is the vi uh, Reloaded Visionary Palette. I bought this initially as a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, Norvina palette. Yes, as you can tell, I buy a lot of dupes for Anastasia. Anastasia was like the one brand I was like, I need to have palettes from in the future, but I can't afford it now, so just, you know, um, buying some dupes for it. Now, this palette, I think, is my most affordable palette. It's $8 um, AUD, which is insanely cheap. It's like one and a half cups of coffee, if you think about it. It's sometimes it's only one, like, frappuccino. It's so affordable. The mattes blend really nicely, actually. They're a bit on the powdery side. They have some kickback, but the shimmers phenomenal they are so bright and pigmented they just shine so nicely they do tend to get a little bit hard pan but the main thing is i just don't reach for this palette enough um these colors i can dupe them out in most of my other palettes um and they're not as pigmented as, as i would like to they also take a little bit longer to blend out so it's not something i reach for all the time and i just don't get enough love out of it so i'm going to declutter this as well Mercury Retrograde. Now this is a palette that I love. So I've been lusting over this for a long time. Like look at the colors. It's just so pretty. It definitely gives me like extraterrestrial vibes and I love the whole theme of it. It's very mauvey actually if you think about it's pink and purpley tone and all these shimmers are so great. Um, Actually the shimmer shadows here, these two remind me of the shadows in Cleo, like those jelly shades. Um, they actually remind me of those because they're very glittery. They have those chunks. It's very pretty, but not like chunky in a bad way. The only disappointment is the shade Haze here. It just doesn't blend, doesn't build up. The pigment's not there, which is quite a shame because I don't have another shade like this in my collection, but really like this palette, so I will be keeping. And look how pretty this packaging is. I love the holo, like holographic um, packaging as well. So keeping that one. I'm keeping this no matter what because I love Sailor Moon and this is the first like eyeshadow palette I've ever gotten from Colourpop so really nice. I actually really like the colour scheme. I don't know what other people say but I know there's no like dark shadow to make it like a perfect palette so you can travel with it but for me I only use light shades anyway. I use like one of these shades um, to wash over the lids. I just put some of the shimmers on and that's it. That's my look. So for me I don't really find that I need a darker shadow to go with it. The only thing is I don't use the pressed glitter. I just don't use pressed glitters in general, but honestly, everything else about this palette, phenomenal. And look at the packaging. It is just so cute. So keeping this on. This is the Garden Variety by Colourpop. This palette, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is my perfect palette. I love it. There's some purples. There's some like nice warm browns. There's also like a green olive kind of brown, which is really, really unique to my collection. These shimmers are stunning. They're satin shades. It's a succulent theme. I need to have it, right? 
However, I just don't get enough out of this. Like, ugh, the more I look at this, the more like, oh, this is so beautiful. But the truth is, I don't use this palette. I just don't reach for it. I, a lot of these shades, whilst they're very stunning and unique, so like, root them up. Like I said, that green brown is just really pretty. And the warm, like, brown here, I just don't use it. I just think I go for other palettes a bit more. And the sad thing is, the shimmers in this palette, so Third Eye, Best Buds, Smudge Off, they're just a little bit more crumply than the usual ColourPop palettes. The quality is still good, but it's not as good as the usual shimmers. I don't know what happened. It crumbles and there's a lot of fallout on my face, so I don't like it. So I will be decluttering this. It needs to go to a better home. Um, it is so pretty though. I've barely used it, to be honest. Um, so we'll be getting this out of my collection. Mecha Max Dream Queen. We all know by now this is like probably my favorite palette ever. Uh, the pan size is a massive. It's a face uh, and eye palette. So I actually use like a lot of these shades for blush, um, setting my eyes, highlighter, etc. It's a really pretty palette. Nothing to fault about it. I absolutely adore it. Um, I'm never going to declutter this. My favorite palette from Mecha Max. The shimmers, so stunning. The matte, buttery, smooth. These marble shades so unique and just beautiful. I love it. The only thing is the packaging actually kind of broke. Um, so there's no clasp on it anymore. It's just like flimsy. So I have to take good care of it, but I do actually really like it. So keeping this. Oh, the Soph and Revolution palette. Now this is a classic drugstore palette that we all love. As you can see, I do love it quite a bit. I have Hip Pan on um, two of the shades and there's some obvious dips in some of these colors. This is the best formula for an eyeshadow by any drugstore brand I've ever tried. In fact, I actually think, this is gonna get some hate, but the mattes in this are better than Huda Beauty's. I like my softer eyeshadows. Huda's are a bit more like harder, but more pigmented, but I like these, how like you do understand like there's some kickback and colors in the pan. I just really love the color section, so I've killed it. And this formulation is so different from um, the Visionary palette. This is just a bit drier and powdery, not that much pigment, but this is completely different. The mattes are so smooth, buttery, pigmented. The shimmers, stunning. It just packs a punch. You only need to go once and nothing not to love. This is also the best matte black shadow I have ever used. It is insanely pigmented, true matte, and it stays. It doesn't bleed or anything. It's just so good. I like to use it as a shadow liner, and I love this. I also love this shade Petrol. It's like this almost duochrome. It's like a brown, blue, turquoise. I really like it. I think it's unique. Really love this palette, so keeping that. Uh, talking about Huda, this is my first Huda Beauty palette, the Topaz Obsessions. To this day, I still love this palette a lot. It's like a lot of oranges, which I love. I love to use this in summer. It's just so pretty. This orange shade all over the lids and a little bit of shimmer, or you have some shadow liner. It is just perfect. I love this for summer. I really like the formulations. Um, even though it's a bit on the hard side, I like it, so I'm going to keep it. The Smashbox Full Exposure. This is the tiniest palette I have. Also really expensive. I think it's like $38. Um, but I really like this because it's my true cool palette. So the only palette that I have is like only cool shades. I love this silver shimmer. It's very unique. And this kind of slate gray. I really love this. Um, I love the mattes. They're really, really nice. They're pigmented. They're easy to blend out. Uh, they do hit hard pan a little bit. But once I scrape up, um, scraped off the layer... I've been using for a long time. This shimmer is so perfect and these um, kind of glittery metallics, perfect and stunning. So love this palette. It's my only cool shade palette so we'll be using this a lot. Going Coconuts by Colourpop. This is a cult favourite. This is so classic. Let's be real. I feel like this is when Colourpop was at the height of, you know, like releasing things at the perfect time. So... Right now they release something every like week, but this is just such a nice neutral palette for every day. The shimmer is stunning. Palm um, Reader is a little bit on the crumbly side. This is what I mean by crumbly. It kind of just really easily flakes off when I tap off a little bit. That's what I mean by the shimmers are like that in my Garden Variety palette. But these 
are so pretty they just glide on so smoothly i love the sequin shade it's a matte with some glitters in it really pretty and um, these mattes easy to use very nice for every day you can make a very simple look or you can make a very glam look versatile and really like it okay this palette nars ignited oh my gosh how much do i love this palette i love it way too much like you have these mattes which are really staple colors you can um you can put it as a wash over your lids you can just add some depth it's really nice and then you have your like kind of shimmery shades just to add some dimensions and then you have these six like pops of color these i don't even know how you describe them they're like jelly shades they're like a topper and you just need to pat some on your lids and it transforms your look into something almost extraterrestrial it is just so pretty let me just swatch this shade here like look at that right like that is just insane it is so pretty um there's not that much actual pigment behind these glitters so you're just adding on the glitters but you have these which are a bit more pigmented they have that drawback oh that was a bad swatch but adding this to your look it adds that extra dimension that you want but also that little bit of shimmer to make your lids look juicier which is really stunning um and then you have your true metallics it is just look at that it is such a pretty palette i don't think there's anything bad to say about it. the mattes are so buttery and smooth they basically blend themselves and the color scheme is just something i love like purples warm tones so really really like this palette um i did buy this on full price but literally the next week it was 50 percent off on mecca so i was really sad but um i still think it's really worth it uh look at that i can't get over these shimmers so really pretty keeping that one next is making mauves by colourpop again this was at the height of its nine pan palettes i think again you have your basic browns just to make it a neutral palette but then you have these like purple mauve shades that really give it something these like this shade it looks basically kind of like a gray but it has that really rich purple undertone and look how pigmented that is it is just buttery smooth like can we see how purple that actually is it looks really light in the pan but it's actually really really dark and then you have your good old like super shocks like bam that is that is just so stunning um but then you do have your good old like metallics which again is a little bit on the crumbly side as you can see um let me just show you like can you see it's a little bit more crumblier but it's still really really pretty it packs a punch it's pigmented so this palette is my favorite palette from Colourpop purely because I love my mauve shades and this does it perfectly so keeping this one for sure I said I wasn't going to swatch anything on my hands but I got a bit carried away with eyeshadow I really didn't want to swatch anything though because it gets glittery and everywhere so yeah i'll try to wash this off last but not least my so jaded palette from colourpop this is a really beautiful palette like come on let's be real it's colorful but it's also very neutral you can use it for every day um there's a lot of formulas here i really love the super shock shadow in diamond uh don't use opal and topaz that much because they're pressed glitters but everything else i do love and use this is my go-to colorful palette as you can see a lot of these shades are actually really similar to the Rimmel palette that I just decluttered so I do reach for this a bit more and I like the formula more so keeping this one and that's it for my eyeshadow I think I did quite a good job um, keeping my collection relatively smaller and yeah let's move on to the next category okay so this is my top drawer where I basically keep everything I don't fit um, underneath so let's start with that I first have a bunch of little samples of perfume uh, which I will take better care of I promise so I will just put this here I'm definitely gonna keep all those I love my perfume I have some miscellaneous uh, skincare which I will also keep these are really nice I really like it they're in travel size so we'll keep these as well uh, <laughs> I do have a few key rings they're very cute so I don't know why they're up here um, 
They're very cute. Look at them. So we'll be keeping these as well, right? <laughs> of course, they're very cute. Uh, I do have a silica gel just here because I don't want... I do have perfume here and I don't want it to leak or um, it gets old because of some moist and grow some weird things. So I do have a silica gel. Let me just bring everything out. First of all, let me just bring the front row out. So at the back, as you can see, I have like the packaging for all my perfumes that I really enjoy, so I'm going to keep that there, actually. I do actually have my Jimmy Choo box, so I'm going to put that here as well. I do like that display, it looks very nice. And over here, I have my corner of, like, setting spray and foundation and some miscellaneous powder, so I do like to keep that there. I'll just arrange that. I'm going to keep all my foundation because I only have two anyway. These are really nice. I've been using these for a long time. And whenever I do feel like doing a full coverage look, they never disappoint me. So I do like to keep my foundation here nice and covered. And I do have my setting spray with me. I don't have that many. I only have three, which I think is a good amount. I don't need that many. My favorite one, I have to say, is actually the Pretty Fresh. The spritz on this is absolutely stunning. Let me just show you guys. So, like, did we see that? It's like an aerosol. It's so good. The only thing is, it has like a very strong coconut uh, vanilla scent to it, which I hate. I hate coconut scents. But the spritz on this is too good for me to say anything. So, love this. Um... The NYX one is actually really nice as well, the dewy finish, but it smells sour to me. I don't know. It's also a really nice spritz. It's not as good as the ColourPop one because it's not as fine, but it's also really good. Um, it's quite sparse in spreading out products, so really nice. This just smells a bit strange, so. The All Nighter is just, we all know this is beautiful, so. The spritz on that one is a little bit more um, bigger, but... I do really like this. It does what it says and it makes my makeup last all day. So I use this when I need to like actually make my makeup last more than like eight hours. So this never lets me down. It's almost empty actually. So those are really nice. Oh yes, I do have my tiny Levier Bell packaging here. We'll put that there. So this is a little sample. And as you can see, so we'll start with my perfume collection. So I don't have that many, honestly. The rest I actually gave to mom. Well, mum kept it for me. So I have my good old Dolce & Gabbana 3 Long Paratrice. I um, really like this. It's a very nice fruit cocktail. I love watermelon, rhubarb. It's very good. It smells a little bit sour on my skin when it's the colder months. But once it's hot, perfect. So really, really enjoy this. Next is the good old Versace Bright Crystal. This is like a cult favorite, I feel like. If pink, like the color pink was a perfume, this is what it is. It's sweet. It's free, fruity, it's florally, it's just very nice. It makes me feel really happy whenever I wear this. I really love this for the summertime. It wears a long time as well. Um, the Dolce & Gabbana one lasts probably three hours max, but this lasts like a good six hours. I really like it on my skin. It's not too overpowering, but again, it's not nothing special. It's pretty generic as a perfume, but it's one you can't hate if you like sweet floral scents. So really enjoy this. And La Vie Belle, I'm just going to put that next to it because it's quite small, but this thing lasts on my skin for like 10 hours. <laughs> no, not even 10 hours, like 20 hours. It doesn't fade. It just, it's, the lasting power is crazy. It's just a nice floral and sweet perfume. It has that base note of vanilla in it. I think it's kind of like a more intense version of the, um, Bright Crystal, it's nothing too special, but Lancome does make some really nice perfumes, and this is a very famous one, so I'm really glad to have a sample of it, but is it my favorite? No. Will I use it? Of course. And this lasts like crazy, so one dab, and I'm done for the day. And it's not too overpowering, so I do like it, but we'll see about spending $200 on this. Next is the Trezoir Midnight Rose by Lancome. This is my favorite perfume of all time. Okay. I love rose perfumes and sweet perfumes. This is the perfect concoction of the both. It is rosy, it has that a strong raspberry kind of scent and it's just like a sweet syrupy scent. That makes it sound really bad actually, but 
I just love my really sweet fragrances and the underlying rose scent makes it a lot more sophisticated and this lasts on the skin a good 12 hours. It doesn't fade and the notes slowly change. So at first you might think it's a little bit overpowering with that rose and then slowly it will fade into like a nice raspberry fruity strawberry scent almost. And then the fade is just really nice and subtle. It isn't just like one strange note to another. I think it's just a very sweet and perfect um, perfume. Next, I have the um, L'Atelier de Sartil. I have no idea how you pronounce it. I learned French for four years. That clearly did nothing. But this is a collaboration between VT Cosmetics and BTS. Um, I got this in Eau de Coton because Gin is my bias. And this was the one scent that I actually looked up the notes for and I think I will wear them most because it sounds just very easy to like. It's a um, scent that's for both genders. It's kind of just a almost like bright crystal but sharper if that makes sense. Now I didn't expect this perfume to be that good, not going to lie, because I bought this to support BTS but I actually really enjoy it. I love wearing it in the winter because it feels like fresh laundry to my nose and that's a really comforting scent to me. However, upon first spray, it is really sharp and you get that alcohol scent. You do need to wait a few minutes for it to settle down, but once it does, it's a really nice scent. It's a little bit on the sweet side and I think, like I said, the idea of fresh laundry, maybe that's why it's the cotton scent. So I actually quite enjoy it, but will I repurchase? No, um, I only purchased this to support them. But it's not like I'm angry I bought it. I still use it, like as you can tell, I did use quite a bit of it. Just, um, yeah, bought this for memory's sake. Last but not least, I have my Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo, um, it is the classic one and this is a really nice scent. It's very sweet and you definitely get that patchouli scent. It has that green um, note underneath uh, and I think the main note I get out of this is just sweet. Caramel gourmand. It's very very tangy on the like lips almost. Not lips but it's very tangy. So it lasts a long time. I think this is a good six to eight hour perfume and I really like it because I just enjoy my sweet perfumes. Is this my favorite? No. I don't get the pear, which I was really excited to try out because I love pear scents and this just didn't do it for me. Nonetheless, I still love wearing it for winter as you can see. I've used quite a lot of it for winter because it makes me feel warmer. You get that caramel and toffee. It just feels very sticky and warm on the skin, which I do actually really enjoy. It sits very close and um, it works well with my body chemistry, but it is a little bit on the sickly sweet side, so almost too sweet for me. It's a different sweet from the Trezor Midnight Rose, whereas that one is mixed with a bit of rose and raspberry. This is just pure sweet, which... I'm not too big a fan of. I think after using this entire bottle, I won't be repurchasing. Whereas um, the Trezoir, uh, Lone Power Trees, and Bright Crystal, I would keep on repurchasing so over and over again. This one, once I use it up, that'll be it. But uh, while I do have it, I do enjoy it a lot. So that's it for my fragrance. Whew, that's a lot. Um, let me just put that here. Oh, sorry. Last fragrance. This is the Royal Revolution by Katy Perry. Uh, this is the blue version. The red one is the original. This is the more citrusy fresh one. I actually really like this. As you can tell, I use so much of this. I'm almost using this like my um, project pan. I just use this whenever I remember. This perfume, I bought this to support Katy Perry because I've been a Katy Pat. I've been a Katie cat for the longest time and I purely bought this to support her. But I actually do enjoy the notes a lot. I get the leather, which is a really unique scent in my opinion. It's um, very, very soft on the nose actually. You get that vanilla and citrus scent upon first um, spray. But as it fades, you kind of only get the vanilla, which I don't really enjoy. I actually hate vanilla as a scent. Um, I know that's a very unpopular opinion, but... I just don't like vanilla and that's one reason I don't like it. I think if you enjoy vanilla, this is a really great scent. It lasts a good 5-6 hours on the skin and 
it's just really nice. You only need to spray like two spritz and it's enough to last for that long. So I think this is a really nice perfume for a celebrity um, scent. So I really like it. And most of all, can we appreciate the packaging? Like this is so stunning. This cap as well. It's like a crown. It's just really, really pretty. I love like the packaging. I like the idea of the scent, but the scent just doesn't work for me. So I don't enjoy it as much as I could. So I'm trying to use this up. And um, yeah, I, I like it when I spray it, but it's not like when I spray, I'm like, oh, I'm having a good scent there. It's more like, oh, I smell good today. Uh, I could smell better. And I think about other fragrances when I spray this, so I won't repurchase this for sure, but I do actually want to try the red one. It's a very chocolate scent, I heard. So I haven't tried this chocolate perfumes before, so I'm actually really excited. So, so now I'm just going to show two powders. Um, definitely going to keep these. They're really nice. I'm just going to put them over here. And last but not least, I have my Anastasia Vault I bought last year um, during Black Friday. So I got the Norvina palette and the Soft Glam palette, which both I adore equally, so won't be getting rid of these. Ta-da! That is it for my declutter and makeup collection. It looks very organized as well, doesn't it? Okay, and the bottom drawer, you have my single... Um, trays with everything and i'm just going to change the labels as well because these are all falling off and they don't match the contents for most of them so really enjoy it my two face palettes my eyeshadow palette collection and my declutter collection wow that's a lot oh now look at all these products i have decluttered that is quite a considerable amount in my opinion because <laughs> if you watched last year's video, I barely did anything and this is a huge upgrade. Guys, nice, that's it for today's video. As you can see, I decluttered so many products, which I'm personally really proud of because I am such a hoarder, as you can tell. Like, from last year's video, end of year makeup collection declutter, you could tell I was just always making excuses for myself. Like, oh, maybe I'll use it, maybe I'll do this, I can use it this way, that way. It was just a lie. I think deep down I just wanted to think, oh, you know, if I paid for it, I'm going to have to use it, otherwise I'm not getting my money's worth. But now I think my ideology has changed a little bit. I think it's more like if I have something, I want to use it and have the most enjoyment out of it. Whereas these products, when I use it, I don't get enjoyment out of it. So there's not much point keeping them in my collection and just, you know, taking up space in general. So I'm really proud of myself for actually decluttering all of these products and yeah that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed watching this video as well because it was really calming for me to clean up my makeup collection and choosing out my favorites showing you guys some of my favorites and telling you guys what didn't work for me now again if some of these products are your favorites that i've mentioned and they work for you keep on using them it just it's different for everyone so for example the lash princess by essence that mascara is a lot of people's like holy grail from the drugstore so if you enjoy it, keep on using it, don't worry. I want to love it too, but it just didn't work for my droopy, straight, short lashes. So keep on using it and I think you will have a lot of fun with everything. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like it, please give it a like, um, thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you do want to see more content like this. But apart from that, that's it for today and I'll see you for the next video. Bye!